people have said, well, let's decentralize and have Web 3.0 and distributed systems so we don't have to worry about one centralized location providing all of our information. The problem is, is if you knock out that one power plant, you still lose all of your capacity for having any kind of information or distributed systems. So really, the solution is to distribute everything, to have a small, decentralized power. Not only that, this allows for a more economic solution. When you look at new nuclear plants, part of the reason why people are really hesitant when we look at the light water reactors, an AP1000, which is the most recently licensed and built reactor in the US, they're building them right now in South Carolina, was $30 billion to build. There are so few entities in the country that have the capital to be able to build that. And it leads to the situation that we heard talked about this morning, where we have centralized authorities doing these kinds of things. On the flip side, what we have been working really hard to do is to become the Model T of nuclear reactors. And that means no longer doing light water reactor technology, rather using these molten salt thorium reactors that don't make waste, that can't melt down, and that we can actually make much more economical by having small distributed power. What you see here in the top left is actually the entire system. That is an entire power plant that fits in a truck bed and that services a thousand homes. So you can take one of these incredibly small footprint truck beds and you can actually place them directly where you need the power and have a truly, for the first time, decentralized, reliable, high power network. In fact, they're very modular. If you wanted to power a city like New York, you could stack 100 of these together. Perhaps some of the other great benefits, these salt reactors operate at such a high temperature that by the time you're done making electricity, the salt is still hot enough that you can use the leftover to be able to pump and desalinate water, to send heat out to other industries, and to provide district heating for everybody nearby. So in theory, you could take one of these reactors, you could park it under a park in a brand new city development of about four or five blocks square, and you would be able to provide that city electricity, power, water, heating, and any industrial resources you need at about half the cost of natural gas today. It's just absolutely mind-boggling how well these things can work. So why don't we have them yet? Really, it comes down to the regulation. One last thing I wanted to bring up really quickly before we finish, and that is a new technology for cancer treatment. Sloan Kettering, about 20 years ago, developed a technology they called targeted alpha therapy, where you take somebody's antibody and you tune it to travel to a cancer cell. The problem is our antibodies are not capable of destroying the cancer cells. So what they did is they attached a radioisotope, meaning an isotope that after about 45 minutes would give off an alpha particle, a bowling ball, and that would be enough to destroy just the nearby cancer cells. This was so effective in their initial studies that the success rate was 90% plus. People who were on death's door with three treatments were in complete remission of their cancer. That's amazing. Why don't we do this today? Turns out that perfect isotope we needed is only made with thorium. And the way they got theirs was the thorium reactor that Alvin Weinberg ran back in the 1960s. So this technology really does represent, in my opinion, the future of energy, but has side benefits that are wide-reaching. For example, providing the materials for doctors and cancer treaters to be able to really have the most effective treatment for cancer we've ever seen. So, summary, we need distributed power systems if we want to have distributed information and if we want to have the blockchain-type societies that we're talking about. Nuclear power has incredible potential, but also some challenges. But when we talk about molten salt reactors, that technology has already been proven. And it doesn't make weapons, it doesn't make waste, and it can't melt down. And so companies like AlphaTech and maybe half a dozen others in the US are trying to commercialize this technology. What's the barrier? The regulation barrier is high. We're trying to prove every part of this will work in every possible situation, and that takes time. But when we do that, in my opinion, molten salt reactor technology represents reliable, clean energy that can be the future of energy that will support the systems that we're talking about here. Thank you.